What is up, guys? Today, I want to talk about mobility and strength. So we're going to be touching in these two topics and the balance that we need to have both on strength and stability. Let's try to like put it in the same box for now. Then we can like go into the little details. And the same with mobility. Let's not worry about end range strength or flexibility just now. Let's put mobility as any um, an umbrella term that covers any range of motion, and let's use a strength as basically generating force, whether that is an isometric hold or whether there is a concentric movement. So I'm gonna bring, once again, my brother, Danny, which is amazingly flexible. So brother, <laughs> can you show us that King Cobra one more time? The position that you did on the picture. Oof. So he hasn't warmed up today, he hasn't trained today at all, and he is still it's able to to touch his head. I mean, if he does a back bending routine, he would probably like go like go super super crazy. Now, what I would like you to try to do in that position, so you have this strength. Mm -hmm. Now, try to lean forward and try to rock and just hold this and see what happens. Don't try this, please, unless you know what you're doing. So I go here. Yeah. Now bend exactly the same way that you were bending. Bend your, your calf as well towards you. And now lean forward and try to push and hold yourself up. Mm-hmm. Rock and then hold yourself up. OK. <laughs> so he's lacking two things, as we saw on the, yeah. on the video. Awareness and control of movement. Obviously, that's an advanced movement. And a strength. Let's see how many push-ups can you do, as many push-ups as you can. And if you're watching this, try it out right now. How many push-ups can you do? Good form push-ups. Try it out with your elbows right here. So. Mm -hmm. Your hands as close to the block, and if you bring the block back, you lose. Let's see how many push-ups can you do. As we spoke, a strength or bent arm strength, we're talking about push-ups, uh, which is horizontal pushing, and then pike push-ups. Okay, that's good, too. Three and stability is a top plan. Four, five, six, seven, eight. He's messing all the blocks right here. <laughs> Ten, good. So you got actually a good decent amount of strength. Now, oh, as you can see, he's shrugging his shoulders, bringing the shoulders down into depression. So all those little details and this lecture specifically is to talk about strength and mobility, but most importantly to see that even if he's more on the uh, mobility dominant side, and Fabian is on the strength dominant side, that doesn't mean that he's as strong in, in everything. And, and he's, I mean, he's flexible in everything. He might be strong, he's strong in push-ups, but he's doing that wrong movement pattern. And the goal of this phase is for you to find those, all those little limitations that you may have. So one of your limitations, do you bench, bench press a lot? Yeah, so if I did it in the past too, we tend to shrug our shoulders, and you do shrugs too as well? Yeah. So that could be, it's not so bad for hand balancing because you have the elevation, but it can set you back for planches and for like pushing movement patterns. So for him, he, I would, I would make him do an absolutely complete different workout than I would do to Fabian. Now, since this is a program for all of us, I cannot make a program for each one of you guys, so that's why we do all the recommendations and all the little tips and the lectures and all, all that is encompassing hand balancing is for you guys to observe as much as possible. So we're going to do another test if you're doing this with us. Let's do a hands and fall against the wall, walking yourself up, yes, which is actually going to be the first day of hand balancing. And if you cannot walk yourself up against the wall, you're going to scale it down. That is absolutely OK with scaling down. So even though he didn't, he's not massively strong like Fabian, he can do a chest to wall hands and good. Try to get your, your hands shoulder width, so close them a little bit. Good, good. Point your toes, squeeze everything together. Now hold, let's see how, how much you can hold it. He should be able to do one minute. We are aiming for one minute as a working set for this phase, so three sets of one minute. If you already got that, that is by no means, uh, that doesn't mean that you can do a one minute hands and hold for three times, so you still may have some other limitations, but Maybe holding this like he's doing, he's shaking. He needs to be doing this if he want to master the handsome, for example. And we can come down. Thank you, brother. <laughs> and that'll be all. Thank you. Thank you so much. And 
he needs to be doing that because he's shaking. It's an exercise that is actually hard for him. So he would record himself, put a, a note on how long he can hold it, and as you move through the program, I guarantee if you eat right, you sleep well, and you do everything that is on the PDF and on the videos and everything, I promise you that you're going to see progress in those little areas. Because we cannot isolate balance, mobility, and al balance, alignment, and strength. You could in some way, but it's not the most efficient way. Why? Because if I'm working towards, let's say, a bent arm press, which is a strength movement, if I want to isolate, I can isolate and do pipe push-ups. Then I can isolate and work on balance separately. And then I can isolate and work on the transition itself. But is that efficient for my time? I don't think so. So what would I do? I would do bent arm press walks. Keep rolling forward. There I'm working on my scapula, and I would hold the hands and at the end. That's the approach that we're going to be taking. We're going to be combining lectures to understand some of the principles, but not taking it too far that we don't apply it into the practice, because it is in the practice where you're going to see the most amount of benefits. Now, to conclude this lecture, and we move it to part two, where Fabian, grabbing that camera over there, <laughs> even though he's so strong, he's dying with the shoulders right now. Uh, <laughs> to conclude this lecture, which is if you are a mobility dominant person, and by mobility dominant, I mean flexibility comes easier to you than a strength comes to you. This can apply if mostly if you're, if you're a woman, you, we tend we. Okay, thank you. <laughs> if you are a woman, you tend to be more flexible than actually being a strong. But that depends on your hormone, hormones, on your training style, on your background, on so, so many things that I really, really want you guys to explore that and see how everything affects everything. And I promise you that by the end of the six weeks, you are going to know which hip flexor is tighter, the left or the right, which one is stronger, uh, which arm is stronger, which limitations you have, and I'm not going to have to tell you that. The classes are there for you to explore and for me to guide you towards that, but it is your job to observe those limitations. I just realized that he has these overactive straps, just like myself. He needs to be doing some ring supports and some other drills to facilitate that. Now, if you are in the mobility side, and you are lacking a strength. The first day, we're gonna be doing hands and hold against the wall. We're gonna be walking towards the wall. If you cannot walk towards the wall, don't stop the program, don't get frustrated, don't, <laughs> don't think that you don't have it in you. I come from a bodybuilding background. I had the strength. I didn't have the mobility. I didn't have the flexibility. I didn't have the control. I was wobbly and not good at all. I might put an overshot right now. <laughs> so if you are on that mobility side and you cannot walk yourself upside down in the first class, I wanted to make this le lecture today prior to that class because if that's the case, do not worry. We're really going to be working mostly on this phase on stability and strength of our arms. And in one week, you're going to see progress from five push-ups to 10 push-ups. And if you're combining this with the calisthenic systems, which I would recommend, but that's for the hybrid system, then you're going to build the strength necessary to move forward. What I don't want you guys to do is skip all the strength exercises and go and do only king cobra position and just stretch your back and stretch it further, unless that's what you want to do. But be careful of imbalances and just working towards areas that you might not be needing to work. So if you are a mobile person, a hypermobile person, or a person that tends to go to flexibility more than strength, push-ups, pike push-ups, dips, and hands and holes against the wall, uh, hands and shrugs against the wall every single day, basically. But as always, listen to your body and do what works for you. I'll see you on the practice.